Oh yeah, welcome back to the highway with Kyle Shutt. I hope you brought your sweet tooth this week because we have Miss Cece Locine. She's played in bands like So Unloved and Phobia, but she's also the owner and operator of America's premier vegan bakery, Zucchini Kill. We're going to talk all about the pitfalls of owning your own business, getting served cease and desist orders from enormous corporations, being embraced by the punk and metal community, and giving back, which is what baking is all about. If you like what you've been hearing on the program, hit that subscribe button, push that follow tab, you do whatever you gotta do to make sure you don't miss a single episode, and then go have a bunch of vegan treats afterward to reward yourself for doing the right thing. And if you want to go one step further, you can find us at patreon.com slash the highway. Get yourself some rad perks like early access to next week's episode, get a shout out on the program, put a six pack of beer in my fridge, you can even get a virtual guitar lesson from me once a month. Anything you people want. We also have to give some mad love to our sponsors, Heil Sound, because if you like the way I sound, it's because there's a Heil in front of me. I know I say that every week, but it's because I mean it. Now it's time to talk about cookies and cakes and everything that bakes, you know what I'm saying? Let's do things my way. The Highway. Hi, CC. Hi, Kyle. Thanks so much for coming on the program. I have had some really diverse guests, but <laughs> you going from being in punk bands to like extreme vegan grindcore bands to tour managing other bands to owning your own world class vegan bakery. I mean, world class. That is, hey. that is a wild journey. I really wanted to talk about it. Um, I, I, I would love to hear um, what life was like growing up in San Antonio. I was uh, born in San Antonio, but I never really lived there. And um, uh, I moved out to Midland, Texas uh, when I was a young boy and uh, never. Wait, wait. It's very hard to get claim, into like punk and everything. But do I want? You claim San Antonio, though, is your hometown, right? Sort of. I, I grew up like half an hour like east of there in like Jordanton, Pleasanton kind of area. And, and uh, oh, okay. so, yeah, I, I never really spent a whole lot of time there, but I was born there. But what was it like? Yeah, growing up in San Antonio and uh, uh, being a punk. San Antonio. We take our punk and metal very seriously down mm-hmm. there. <laughs> But dude, back in and back in my day, it was like punks and metalheads didn't always get along still back in those <laughs> shitty days. And like I remember going to punk shows and like uh do you remember that place Wackies? No. I think was, the, the sanctuary like where, was like kind of wh- where I used to go to shows by the time I moved to Austin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like Wackies uh is where like Limelight is now on St. Mary's Strip in San Antonio, but uh it was a rad punk venue when I was growing up, and that's where I went to my first punk show when I was like twelve. I went and saw Blink seventy seven, <laughs> and I think the sh- the Strap Ons played and the Flatliners played, like San Antonio Flatliners, uh, and it was so amazing. But I like loved the camaraderie. You know, it's like if I fell down, people picked me up, mm-hmm. and I remember like liking metal too. But going to metal shows at the White Rabbit. I'd have like big burly dudes knock me down and not pick me up. And I just felt so unwelcome at mm-hmm. the metal shows. And it was like, it put a sour taste in my mouth for metal, like as far as like being in that scene growing up. But punk rock saved my life. I mean, it gave me direction and everything. But yeah, San Antonio goes hard. And I don't know. I feel like I've been playing shows there since I was 13. When um, Did you ever get to meet Omega? No, I did not. Yeah, so she's the singer in my band So Unloved that I joined when I was 13, and she's been my best friend for my whole life. I've known her since I was eight. I've seen you all a but, bunch, but uh, I don't think I've ever met. Yeah, it's six. six wait, you've seen us? Mm-hmm. I saw you at the Lost Well maybe six years ago, something like that. Cute. Yeah, Omega and I have been playing together for a very long time. <laughs> but um, yeah, so like she would take me to shows and stuff, and it was like... I don't know, second home, belonging, you know? That's what punk rock is for a lot of people, I feel like. But I love how you went to your, San Antonio. I, was gonna, I love how you went to your first punk show at 12 and then 13, you're already in a band. It's the perfect story. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm ambitious. I don't know. <laughs> right. Did you, uh, Had you already been playing guitar at that point or any, any other instrument? 
No, I took drum lessons when I was like 10 or 11. I was really obsessed with Hanson when I was like in fifth grade. I was like, those cute boys are my age and they're playing music <laughs> and they play instruments. And then I like the the drummer for Hanson was 10 years old when I was 10 years old. And I was like, well, I guess I'm going to be a drummer. And I like <laughs> took drum lessons at like Alamo City Music, whatever, in San Antonio for a long time. But then um, I wasn't really good at drums. I remember my brother took over my drum set and my drum lessons, and he got really good at drums. But Omega, who she's six years older than me, so she actually she used to date my brother. That's how I met her. And uh, when they broke up, I was devastated. She was like my idol. And uh, one time after they broke up, she just called me and was like, hey, come get in my car. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I, like, got in her car. And she drove me out to the country. And just, like, she had started a band. And it was, like, her and three other girls. And they just played music outside at this, like, weird old man's house in the country. I have no idea how she found that place and how they were practicing there. And I went home that night. And I was like, mom, I need a guitar. Hell yeah. <laughs> So that's how it happened. And then I, I remember I just like had my headphones in and I learned how to play all the whole songs I could possibly figure out on by ear. Damn. And that's how it started. Didn't you start like that too? Did you used to play by ear? Or did you take sort lessons? Of, I mean, I uh, I did take lessons, but it was more of um, a guy that wanted to teach me how to play like Bach and things like that. And I really wanted hmm. to learn... Um, I don't know. I was really into just anything on the radio at the time. I was just, that's what I wanted. I was like, I want rock, you know? And uh, <laughs> so I, you know, I did get some like tab books and things like that, but mostly it was, I just wanted to, yeah, learn how to play by ear and stuff like that. Cause that, that's how you really figure out what music is. is uh, Dude, well, it like makes, that. it makes me like playing music so accessible. Mm -hmm. It's like playing music is for everybody. You know, it's like, so there's like a gatekeeping aspect to it, which totally. I like dealt with my whole life. I feel like, but uh, there's, you know, punk rock makes it to where you can literally just know, know two chords mm -hmm. and write songs. Yep. It makes it so accessible for everybody. I really love that. And actually, it's funny. And, like, it's actually harder to write a song with two chords than it is <laughs> with <laughs> like so many other chords. Dude, it has well to be said. a really good song. Yeah. Yeah. Now I tune super low, so everything sounds so much better to me, and I feel like it opened up a whole new world of like. <laughs> chords and riffs i'm like oh yeah tune down mm -hmm. um what was the uh what was the journey like because i didn't know that you were in phobia until like long after i met you i was like no way how, how did you end up in that band because i used to love listening uh, to them hell yeah um yeah so my band so unloved we were touring a lot in like 2005 to 2010 and uh we toured with the exploited and final conflict and uh, two of the dudes from Final Conflict were in Phobia. And we just like, imagine this. <laughs> Me and my girl band are touring around with a bunch of old punks. And uh, our van smells good. We have <laughs> snacks. We have stuffed animals. We have air conditioning. It was like two days into that tour, half of the dudes from Final Conflict were riding in our van. And um, we became super close. And so when Phobia started touring a lot again, they were like, hey, you want to hop in? Like, do you want to come with us? And I was like really into touring and traveling at the time. That had always been my ambition and goal growing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hated coming home to wait tables. I hated it so much. So I just like would start going on their tours and I started like TMing for them and driving and selling merch. I'm like a merch freak i'm like love setting up merch i'm really good at setting up merch i like to keep track of inventory and uh they're all really bad at that so <laughs> i just like <laughs> took over all those things and uh yeah so then i would travel with them a lot and their guitarist you know phobia has been a band since like 1990 mm -hmm. and i was three in 1990 so <laughs> uh they had had steve berta who'd been playing guitar for them for like 20 years he was having a hard time like the way that I was told, he, like, builds steel for rockets. I don't know if that's them making fun of him or if that's actually what he does. But He's an he actual would have rocket to, like, scientist. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they would say. I honestly don't know if that's real. <laughs> but he would have to, like, fly home multiple times to go work a day and then fly back to 
finished tours. And we were with Worm Rot, and he flew home like five times. And we were like missing shows. And it was horrible and like so unreasonable. But whatever. I was like, I don't know. You guys do your thing. And they were like, can you just learn the songs? I was like, uh, okay. So then I started playing like two songs. And then they're like, can you just learn the whole set and come with us? I was like, okay. So then now I play Guitar and Phobia. But I actually haven't um, toured or played with them in about four years. I quit touring to open Zucchini Kill. So, but it's a great segue. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the number one vegan bakery in the world. I mean, I, I would say that. Is there another one that you're you know, oh nipping God. at your heels or anything like that? Cause Dude, it, there's so many good vegan bakeries. Actually, we did get voted number four best vegan bakery in America. Well, that's that's a start. I was really <laughs> yeah. excited. I was like, wow, congratulations! Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's you know the same way that I was saying. Like, I hated coming home to wait tables. Mm-hmm. It was like so hard to like be gone as long as you are. And then also like, you're grateful to come home to a job, but it just fucking sucks. And like, just isn't fulfilling. I kind of just had to like, take a step back and be like, okay, what do I, what am I going to do? Like, I've always loved baking. I want to write cookbooks. I want to write recipes for my, like as my day job. Mm -hmm. So then I just started doing zucchini kill as a pop-up and like, yeah, I, I did do like two fly outs for, to play with phobia, like during the beginning stages of, uh, zucchini and kale, and I regretted it both times. It was like so hard to be away from my business mm-hmm. to like go play shows. Like my heart wasn't in it anymore. So Does I'm it- really glad that I had the opportunity to tour and play with my friends for as long as I did. But and that's like that would be the ultimate goal. Is like you know after COVID, after uh, once my bakery is like functional and just like doing things on its own i would love to be able to tour again and have my business but it just wasn't in the cards as a startup you know starting a business is one of the most totally. difficult things on the fucking planet mm-hmm. i was gonna say like being the guitar player in phobia is like cursed now it's like <laughs> they're, they're always gonna as like, a revolving door <laughs> 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 dude it, it's whatever i f- i feel like there is something to be said for growing up touring with other girls I ended up having a being like so frustrated touring with just men all the time. Mm-hmm. Like no offense, it was just like no, we're awful. Playing me, <laughs> playing music has always been about like I don't know, like camaraderie and friendship and love, which I have with all those guys very much. So I mean, Brian Fajardo uh, from Dallas is like the best drummer on the planet, in my opinion. I can't believe that I was able to like play in a band with him for as long as I did. And he's like a brother to me. And those opportunities are amazing. But like touring with my girls when I was like 16 years old, it was like, that is like chef's kiss of a tour for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's like, I could see myself doing that anytime. I would drop anything I'm doing to go on another (laughs) tour with with my girls, you know? That's awesome. But yeah, it's also like one of those things too where uh, we never, like I didn't, I've never gotten to tour Europe. Or like Japan or Australia. I like how you and, got real uh, quiet there. You're like, oh, no, don't tell anybody. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like yeah, it's like disappointing, you know. But um, my singer and phobia can't get a passport, so it Dang. was like really, really, really frustrating. And yeah, I mean, there's only so many times you can circle the America, <laughs> American yeah. dream, you know. I'm like, Ugh. as an extreme band like that too. Yeah, you can tour. You can tour Florida. Any any old time, oh, I guess. <laughs> I love Miami. I know, me too. I'm playing at Churchill's. You played there before, uh, We've yeah. never played there. I've been to Miami, uh, but no, we, the furthest south we ever made it was uh, Fort Lauderdale. I don't know why. It's such like a... Wow. Like a like a DJ nightclub kind of city. Or, <laughs> or you play Churchill's, and uh, yeah, it just never made sense. I don't know why we never made it, but but I do That's love Toronto. wild. I know. I, I really love Miami, and um, <clears throat> uh, Churchill's back in the day used to have a record store next to it that had a vegan coffee shop inside of it. And it was like so rad for like being able to play at Churchill's where they would serve you vegan curry. And then you could go next door and get vegan cupcakes. That is like such an inspiration to me. Having yep. a music venue with food, having a record store with vegan cupcakes. It's like everything I love in one spot. That's awesome. It was, is it, was that where you got the idea? Maybe to... Uh... <laughs> Dude, no, but I, oh my God, can I tell you something really quick? I of got course. this, I got this message yesterday 
um, from this girl that I don't I don't know who she is, but she's like I guess grew up in San Antonio, and uh, I had posted a TikTok about Zucchini Kill, and she sent me a message and was like, "Hey, I grew up going to punk shows, and like I've seen you be I've seen you giving out vegan cupcakes at punk shows since I was a little kid." She was like, "It's so cool to see you still doing that kind of thing," and I like had an existential moment like. <laughs> how long have I been doing this? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, the cupcakes and shows thing has just been lifelong for me. So maybe not the source of my inspiration at Sweat Records in Miami, but definitely like a, a motivating thing for me to I don't be able know to see that like in action. Yeah, I don't know if it's every, or I, I can't remember every show that I've seen you do it, but definitely at Mohawk, I've seen you like haul up with a, you know, <laughs> an armful of cakes and cupcakes and everything, just <laughs> uh, uh, popping into backstage. I remember um, at the Propagandi show uh, with Reviver and, uh, and Moral <laughs> Women, yeah, you had this like giant vegan cake you had made and you, you uh, I can't remember who was with you, but you came up and you're like, hey Kyle, you know Propagandi, right? It, do you think it would be okay to if, if I just went back there and, and gave them this cake. I was like, they, they would absolutely be okay with that. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> had, to, had to like break you into backstage real quick. Be like, here, go, go quick, quick, quick. I'm but, like, yeah. hello, I have brought you cake. I hope you have a wonderful set. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> that's, yep, that's it. That so I sweet. made them a cookie cake that said, let's talk more rock. <laughs> you know, that's, that's awesome. my favorite. Oh, I mean, you me know too. that's my favorite. Me too. I love, I love that album because it's only 26 minutes long and so I like in high school I could like listen to the whole thing on my lunch break uh, yeah. dude <laughs> oh my dude Propagandi uh, that that fucking album like seriously was one of the biggest motivators of me going vegan when I was young that's awesome yeah I give them like full credit for like I was like I cannot like believe in this and sing along to this and not put it into action it was very very special for me so really yeah admirable. i was very excited to get to bring them a cookie cake and they knew it was vegan and they were very happy i'm sure yeah uh, bands on tour yeah that are vegan I, i'm not vegan by any means but i've toured with many vegans and yeah, they have a rough time or it's I, I guess it's it's a little more um convenient these days i guess uh, or other there's a lot more vegan options but back in the like ni 90s and early 2000s <laughs> yeah it was rough it was rough on a vegan dude yeah but like never would i waver but um they i cannot believe the amount of options there are now uh -huh. and of course now i've been gluten-free for six years so it's like i can't even eat those burger king impossible burgers if i wanted to uh -huh. but I have food trauma from touring and being <laughs> vegan. Like, I can't smell salt and vinegar chips without, like, wanting to barf. And I can't go into a gas station that has a subway in it because Ugh, the smell of the subway, subway makes smell? me want to barf. Ugh, I know no, exactly No, I can't what you mean. handle it, dude. So many times I've just had to get, like, the veggie with, like, brown iceberg lettuce on it and, like, olives and mm -hmm. like oil and vinegar and eating that on tour and like no i can't do it rocky was actually eating chips in his truck the other day and i was like can you roll down the window i can't <laughs> handle this smell it's <laughs> making me feel so bad food trauma dude yep it's not like that anymore it's a new world mm -hmm. <laughs> and now you know it is now it's a really new world um mm -hmm. but yeah i wanted to uh i wanted to ask you about you know, opening your own business has, uh, you know, all of its ups and downs, especially when you're like uh, honing your concept and everything. And uh, I wanted to, you, uh, you started making vegan Twinkies. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I would, I would love to hear you tell the story about uh, <laughs> Hostess cracking down no! on your ass. <laughs> Why? Yeah, no. Um, part of the thing that I like to do with baking is like be nostalgic. You know, it's like mm -hmm. I grew up eating all the like hostess stuff, the like Swiss rolls and the ding dongs and the Twinkies and whatever. Um, and like, I think it's really important to like honor your nostalgia. And like, there's such a beautiful correlation between like memory and food. And so I strive to make things that are inclusive ingredient wise that are also like super nostalgic and like warming to your heart and to like your childhood. So making things that 
look and taste like the things you ate when you were a kid that also accommodate like your dietary restrictions is like priceless to me. So Mm -hmm. Twinkies, or as we call them, cream coffins now, uh, (laughs) that was like a big seller because I make vegan and gluten-free soy-free ones. So um, when I was doing pop-ups and stuff, that's like one of the the items that we were doing that like we were getting really well known for. So when we actually opened our retail shop, a bunch of people were doing write-ups about us and calling us, like, a Twinkie bakery and, like, using the word Twinkie. And I remember, like, Veg News, uh, which is, like, my favorite, like, vegan magazine, they did an article about us and they straight up, like, the headline was Vegan Twinkie Bakery. And, like, a week after we'd been open, I got a cease and desist letter from Hostess being, like, you cannot use these words. And it was, like sponge cake log golden log <laughs> like all this weird stuff oh, like, you cannot use the word twinkie and we had to like send them a certified letter back being like we acknowledge that you do not like that we are doing this and we shall stop and i put it out to the, like our friends and our clients being like what do you guys want us to call these like this twinkies off the table nobody use that word anymore and uh, <laughs> One of my friends uh, came up with cream coffins, and I thought that was very appropriate. And we actually got these like compostable black coffin boxes from our like box distributor. And for like two months, we served every Twinkie, aka cream coffin, in an actual coffin box, and it was like super cute and fun. It's, it's for your dead dreams, right? Thanks, hostess. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm just like. <laughs> As if I'm a comp- a competitor for them, you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm surprised they As didn't just go if. vegan just to crush you. You know what I mean? That's dude. <laughs> also, I was like, I thought you guys went out of business. I thought that Twinkies were no longer. I don't. Even, that was like when everybody was talking about that. Well, don't they last Twinkies forever? Won't. Like they they'll, they'll like <laughs> last a thousand years or something like that. They don't even. They can close the business and still have plenty of Twinkies. Dude, it's one of my dreams to get Woody Harrelson some of my cream coffins. Because you remember that movie he's in Zombieland where he's obsessed with them? Oh, yeah. I bet he's vegan. And, I... like, apparently they, like, had them vegan custom made for him to eat in that movie. We're, like, two degrees away from making this happen. I guarantee you I can make some calls. <laughs> I don't... I don't <laughs> two I'm degrees. Not making, I don't, I'm not making any promises, but we can <laughs> totally make this happen. Woody, yeah, I love to share Woody. that kind of stuff. Yeah. I could just see him like yeah, at his oxygen bar and just puffing vegan Twinkies. <laughs> Twin Twinkies. Yeah, he, he would love it. Oh my god! But on the on the uh, on the flip side of that uh, litigation uh, coin, um, your your business is called Zucchini Kill, <laughs> and you'd think yes. you know that that somebody uh, from the band w- maybe might have a problem with it or something. I would love to hear the the other half of this uh, story. Oh, with Bikini Kill? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Zucchini Kill is obviously a play on the band Bikini Kill, which is news to a lot of people that come into our shop. But, um, (laughs) I don't know anybody in Bikini Kill personally, but again, when we first opened, uh, there was like a lot of commotion online about it. And I'm guessing somebody sent it to Kathleen Hanna because we did get a message from her on like our Facebook or whatever and she was like hey can you guys call something Rebel Swirl after the song Rebel Girl (laughs) and like that's all she said to us so we were like yeah of course we will (laughs) and we make Swiss rolls like those like chocolate thin chocolate cake with like Mm -hmm. vanilla cream in the center and the glaze on top so now those are called Rebel Swirls and they were named after Bikini Kill Uh, Kathleen Hanna got to do it and also, uh, my co-owner, Jess, her friend, got her one of those cameo um, things from Kathleen Hanna. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Kathleen Hanna sent my co-owner, Jess, a cameo of her, like, in her shower, screaming, like, we are Zucchini Kill, and we want a revolution, vegan style now, like <laughs> like the beginning of that Bikini Kill album. <laughs> And I was like, what the hell is happening? This is wild. And also, like, last thing about Bikini Kill is that, like, they're touring next year, Mm -hmm. which is huge. And um, they're coming to Austin. They're doing two nights at the Mohawk. 
So I immediately like hit up their tour manager and I was like, hey, or their um, booking agent. I was like, if they want to do a signing or something, they want to come see what the Riot Girls are doing in Austin, hit us up. They were like, yeah, they're probably not going to do a signing, but they would love to meet you. I was like, okay, cool. So hopefully I'll get to provide them with some Rebel Swirls next year. I'm really excited about it. You're just living the dream. Yeah. And you know what? It's like <laughs> one of my favorite things in the world is like getting to be able to like incorporate music into everything that I do. Mm-hmm. I know that you feel what I'm talking about here, but it's like my shop, it, you know, we listen to whatever we want to. We make like weekly playlists of what we're jamming in the kitchen, like all of us listen to so much music. We have huge eclectic music tastes. We name things after bands all of the time. Mm-hmm. And like, it's so cool to see that like go full circle. Like for example, yesterday I was working my shop and um, this dude came in and he was like, hey, do you remember me? And he's like wearing a mask and like sunglasses. I was like, I have no idea who this is. And uh, <laughs> I was like, I can't really see who you are, man. What's up? And he's like, oh, it's just, I've seen you play a bunch and you stayed at my house in Oakland. And I was like, oh, really? Like when? <laughs> he's like, a long time ago. And he's like, I just saw that you had a bakery down here. And I'm so proud of you. And I know you from touring and I just wanted to come support. Like he came all the way out like to my hard to find bakery to come support me because he knows me from playing music. And like then was in my shop like geeking out about all of my stupid band puns for like the names of our cupcakes and stuff. And it was like so beautiful full circle for me. You know what I mean? I'm just like, dude, talk about community. Like having rad people from all over, even if you just meet them one time, Mm -hmm. like music brings people together. And in this world, it's like getting to meet some of my idols, like going to get to meet Kathleen Hanna or meeting anybody or meeting Propagandi to drop off a cookie cake. Like, that is so, that is like, when I say punk rock saved my life, that's what I'm talking about, dude. I always say, always meet your heroes. Like, what's, because <laughs> even even if they suck, well, then now you know. You know what I mean? But like, more often than not, I've found that like, it's just, it, just it, it's, it's always a positive experience, always enriches your life somehow. Kyle, there's one person that is my hero that I'm very scared that I wouldn't get along with. Oh, yeah? Who, who is it? Courtney Love. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. There's, <laughs> there's already too many of... opinions. I'm not going to add my opinion to the pile. I bet she's got I that would... good shit, though. That's I, I do bet that. Shut you know. up. <laughs> Shut up. I love her so much. <laughs> but I don't know if I want to meet her. I mean, I would, mm. but I don't know if I would. Right. You know? <laughs> it's rough. I, yeah, I mean, with her, her in the last couple of uh, weeks, with just, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I think it's important to, um, you know, with the allegations coming out against people to, like, you know, make it public and stuff like that, but it just kind of seems like she's just taking shots out of thin air and just making shit up lately. I've just been like... I don't know. Man, Kyle. man, I don't know. I don't know either, but it was just well, funny because, like, she would a- make a, a crazy, like, allegation then the next day it'd be like, Courtney Love officially apologizes for her comments and things like that. I was just like, what is going on in her camp right now? She's out <laughs> She's out in London. Just let her live her life out there. She's having a good time. She's not in L.A. and Hollywood getting, you know, like, torn apart by people out there. Yeah. And, and I couldn't she's been imagine sticking up for Britney Spears, and I make that makes mm-hmm. me really happy. Yeah, I, I couldn't imagine too, like just being her and just be, the entire world having just a million opinions about you without having ever met you or anything. Like you know, oh god, that must just drive you insane. Lover or hater, you'd know her. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Absolutely. I love whole records. I mean, they're they're great. Um, Live through this was one of my favorite records, and like probably I got it like ninety ninety five ninety six. Love that album. Yeah, dude, I actually had this conversation with um, Morgan from Kill the Client uh-huh. and and my friend Bob from uh, Pleasant Valley. They were at my shop a couple weeks ago and, oh my God, we were playing Sepultura and this dude came in. He's like, oh yeah, you guys are jamming Megadeth? What's up? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And like... Dude, they got to experience just a fraction of what it's like to be like mansplained metal. To, but anyways, uh, in my own shop, by the way. But yeah, so then this dude came in like, you know, 
guns blaring about like misnaming bands, but I was talking to them about like music and like, you know, music that I'm obsessed with because I don't believe in guilty pleasures. Like I am very open about the fact that Ariana Grande is like my favorite thing in the world to listen to for the past like three years. And, um, but like I was talking about, oh, I left the shop for like two seconds and I came back in and Hole was playing. Like it had come on a playlist or whatever. And Morgan and Bob were like, change it. What are you doing? And I was like, dude, this is not for you. Like Hole, what, like, live through this in 94 i was seven years old Mm -hmm. a young girl full of anger and rage i've always been a very Mm -hmm. (laughs) furious person and she like listening to that album was like so special to me and cathartic and i felt seen listening to that Mm -hmm. and i still listen to so much whole albums and dude by the way pretty on the inside is a doom album and nobody can like change my mind about that that. one but I, I really appreciate that record just because like no nobody knew who they were yet. She wasn't famous, nothing like that. I really really love that album just because it just it, it just it was such a sh- uh, shocking Im- like you know the the cover of it was like crazy. They just uh, the music so was like really bizarre. It wasn't poppy at all. Um, it's so yeah. good. You know, Kim Gordon produced that album. I did not know that. Yeah, it I'm makes so much sense. Yeah, it does. I know it makes so much sense when you know that part. But like. You know, I just made it to the point to those dudes. I'm like, y'all were like in your 20s in 94. And like that music just wasn't made for you. It's okay for Mm -hmm. you to not like it. But you can't hate on it because it's like just because you don't understand it. Not all music is for you. You know what I mean? (laughs) I just had to I had to give them my whole thing because I feel like that dude is like like we're talking about inclusivity with music and Uh like being a girl and growing up and playing music like. I always looked to other women and femme presenting people that like played instruments. That is like seeing like representation is so important because then it no you can like set your, the bar for yourself, you know. Uh-huh. And like seeing Courtney Love dress however the however the however the hell she wanted to, and like being rowdy and loud and gross and cool and all of those things, like showed me that that was okay for me to do as well so is it's important to me in that sense and it was very important to me as in my formative years <laughs> she was a huge influence i know everybody hates her but I no that's her. awesome no 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 th- i mean that's a really beautiful story thank you for sharing that that's that's really awesome because <laughs> uh i feel like i know you even better now um <laughs> you sh- yeah she gets a bad rap oh, well. <laughs> yes she does oh well, oh, well hey what, you what do? do you, you think about any- ariana Oh, I'm sorry. What? Wait, I want to hear. Do you? What do you think about Ariana Grande's vocals? I don't. I, I, I've never listened to her. I'm sorry, dude. Know, you would freak. I don't know anything about her at all. Her voice is insane. <laughs> I'm going to make you a playlist. <laughs> Please do. I I'm really bad about keeping up with the uh, current pop music. It's not that I dislike it. I just I, I don't really ever hang out anywhere where like they play it or like I don't. I, I, I'm usually sitting around my house, like working on stuff, like working on my own music or this or that. I really don't like sit around listening to music. I know this might sound silly, but it's just like, oh my gosh, you're blowing like, my mind right I, now. I was like, I, I am music. I don't listen to music. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, no, it's really difficult for me to like just sit down and like when I do want to listening to something uh, for my own pleasure, it's usually not going to be something I don't know, which is a, yeah. a disservice to the most artists out there. Um, but yeah, there's even like great, you know, metal bands or punk bands or this and that, that I'm sure that are out there making great music. And I just, uh, yeah, I don't know people out there, please send me links. <laughs> Dude, Kyle, I am obsessed with staying on top of what's coming out. Yeah. Like in every genre of music. So I will like try to keep you up to date with that shit. But also Mike Gons and I are your pop fanatics. We are uh-huh. pop stands. And if you just let me and Mike Gons have one night to show you our favorite pop stuff, we did. The, I uh, promise. Uh, Gons was. Leave- uh, I'm sorry. He was the guitar player for my solo band. Whenever we went out uh, with Electric Six, and yeah, he was always up in the front seat of the van, like playing just crazy music that I hadn't you know listened <laughs> to before, and stuff like that. Old stuff too, you know, like weird old pop music that I was really unfamiliar. Yes. with. Yes. He and I are kindred in that in that way. I'm always like. Mike, what do you think about the new Rihanna song? Or Mike, <laughs> like, did you hear the new Ari song? He knows what's up. I do we'll like keep, We'll Rihanna. keep you up to date. I, I, I do like you Rihanna. Do? I, I follow her. Uh, I remember very specifically the day that I realized that me and her weren't going to work out. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a like, beautiful oh, this stoner, is babe. Never gonna happen. Oh man. Sorry, Kyle. Riri. I know, man. You know, he can't. He can't win them all. <laughs> uh, Sorry. I, I, I got. We got. I uh, got ahead of myself here. I was gonna ask. Did Did you ever do any um, uh, hole um, puns at the bakery? <gasps> Um, um, like donut um, holes or <laughs> we have a Miss World cupcake which is like chocolate cake vanilla cream and a baby doll donut on top <laughs> and one time I made like an Instagram caption to promote those that I like took the names of every song on live through this and like incorporated it into that caption um, and then we also we did this crazy cupcake last year for our four year or three year anniversary <clears throat> and it was like called the whole thing and it was giant cupcake stuffed with a cream coffin topped with frosting half a donut and a Swiss roll slice Whoa. and it was like literally giant and cool but yeah we called it the whole thing <laughs> 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 but my favorite obscure band pun is the Lavender Kata. do you remember that band Kata? no uh uh-uh. uh uh, 80s all girl band um, from Pittsburgh. Doomy as fuck. Uh, is, and w- what are they called again? Derketa. D E R K E T A. I'm going to go check that out. But yeah, our, our lavender cupcake is called Lavin Derketa. And literally only one person has ever come in and been like, yeah, I love Derketa. <laughs> Everybody else is like, the lavender, der, um, I'll have the lavender cupcake. <laughs> but Robin, the um, bassist for Derketa back in the day, um, I got to meet her because she TMs for a lot of people too. I bet you have met Robin. Maybe. She's in um, Castrator. She's in Gruesome with Matt Harvey from Exhumed. Hmm. Um, she's in, yeah. And then actually Derketa was started playing shows again right before COVID. Like I think they played the Northwest Terror Fest and stuff. Oh, Still never gotten to see them live, but I love Robin with all my heart. I met her when we were on tour with Napalm Death, Phobia and Aaron Reagan and Napalm Death. And she was TMing for Napalm. Or actually, I think she was just doing merch for Napalm and Greg Daly was TMing. But yeah, I love her with all of my heart. She's one of my idols that I was like, are we friends now? <laughs> Always meet your heroes. Always. I like that you say that, Kyle. I've never heard anybody say the opposite. You know, I always hear, don't meet your heroes. And I'm like kind of motivated by you saying that now. I I, I did get to meet uh, Joan Baez one time. And I'm really, really glad that I got to do that. (gasps) She was awesome. Oh, my God. She was so sweet. I went to go see her. uh, This was in Phoenix at the Celebrity Theater. Uh, My good friend Morgan Isaac. Morgan, what's up? Um he was uh, her uh, production manager, stage manager, something like that. And he was like, hey, I'm in town. You want to go get some drinks? I was like, oh, yeah, who are you on tour with? He's like, oh, it's uh, Joan Baez. And I just freaked out. He didn't think that I would like care or anything like that. I was like, yeah, I, can, can I come to the show, please? He's like, oh, ab- absolutely. So he got me a, a ticket with like the, the meet and greet thing. And I was like, I don't Kyle. need to meet Joan Baez. She doesn't need to oh meet. She's going to look at me like I'm a scumbag, you know? And uh, <laughs> so I go to the show and, and uh, she just comes out. Um, maybe the first four songs it was just her and a guitar and she, she just blew my mind I started crying but like it was it wasn't mm-hmm. like I was crying it just like like tears were just like just flowing out of my face it was like um like the scene in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark like when everybody's faces are melting you know my, my face was literally <laughs> melting she was just shredding this fucking guitar played like shit with her fingers there's no way I could play that I mean her first solo album came out in 1959 you know it was just like I was just in awe it was like a fucking piece of an angel broke off and fell into the room and we were all just like lucky to even see it and it was, it was that amazing. That was so the, the poetic. Whole, uh, the, I mean, that's, that's how I felt. I was just like, what the fuck am I witnessing right now? And eventually, <laughs> yeah. gradually, like, more people would come out on the stage, like a drummer would come out, then a bass player. And then by the end of the show, it was a full-on band, and it was just a fucking incredible show. And uh, so then afterward, uh, it was like the meet and greet thing, and I was like, ah, are we really going to do this? Like, do I need to? I was just like, just Morgan, I'll catch up with you later. He's like, no, 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 you got to go. I was like, all right, fine. So it was just me and then uh, uh, these uh, this older gay couple that I, I gathered from 
hearing them talk that I guess one of them used to do merch for her back in the 80s or something like that. And apparently, wow. and he had a big banana bread. And apparently, like, that was her <laughs> her favorite banana bread, like, ever that he would bake. So he baked her one and, like, brought it to the show to come say hi. So oh. then we all get uh, ushered back into, like, the catering room. And then she's just hanging out in there with her band. And I was just like, oh, my God. It was just me and, you know, uh, these two guys and they uh sat down at this table started talking to her and stuff and the banana bread was you know kind of unwrapped and, and things like that and uh, her son was her drummer and i just ended up kind of talking to her son for a little while because I, I you know i was just waiting for morgan i didn't want to bother her what am i going to say to this you know p- <laughs> pillar of feminism you know icon and i know and so she um if, after like maybe 10 minutes or so everybody's talking and she uh takes a knife and she goes, anybody want any banana bread? And like, look me dead in my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Did and, uh, you eat the banana bread? Well, I said, uh, is there anything funny in it? <laughs> she goes, there's only one way to find out. And she cut me a, a slice and she handed me a slice of banana bread on a napkin. And uh, we ended up talking for about five minutes. And then she asked me if I wanted a picture with her. And, and? I was just like, yes, please. And so we took a picture. I call her my Aunt Joan now. She's crazy. Oh uh, my gosh! Yeah, no, but yeah, Please, I, I, I want totally to got to meet her. Someday. She was awesome. I will. I'll text it to you right now. Uh, I want to see as soon as we it. Get so off. Yeah, it was, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to hijack that uh, that story. Well, there, but yeah, that was um, love. It loved meeting your my heroes. That was always do it. You are like an amazing guitarist and an well, incredible you. musician, and I just wonder, like, is she your favorite like female guitar player? Your do you um, have one? You know, I or, or, her or uh, Nancy Wilson, obviously, um, just mm-hmm. you know, just um, shredders, absolute shredders. Um, yeah, I mean, sh- she's up there just because I I, always, I like listening to guitar players or, or watching them play uh, that do th- things that I don't. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That like play mm-hmm. in a way that like I can't even like, wrap my mind around. And like that's uh, those are two of them uh, that really stick out as far as um, you know being Dude. female and a guitar player. Yeah, mine mine is Saint Vincent. Oh, she's great too. I saw her uh, in Houston, maybe like twenty fifteen. Great guitar player. Have she you can seen those guitars too. that she designed? Yeah, with her Ernie Ball. Yeah. Oh, they're so sick. Wacky and they looking. make it to where it doesn't crush your boobs. Oh, so <laughs> smart. So smart. Uh, she's the uh, one person where, like, seeing her live. I saw her at the Moody a long time ago, and uh, all these things that I thought were like synths and like midis, uh-huh. she was actually doing all those sounds on guitar and like playing them so crazy with like a million pedals and also like singing to a totally different rhythm. Mm-hmm. It blew my mind. I had never been so inspired, like guitar wise, as I was watching St. Vincent live. That's awesome. Man, I, she's I'm, becoming uh, more and more like Prince. She's like she reminds me of Prince. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Also, just um, she's she's a Texas girl, too. So mm-hmm. that yeah, that's um, I didn't realize that until after she was like wicked famous. But uh, yeah, she's uh, she holds it down for the Lone Star State. <laughs> yes, I love that you know that she's Texan, <laughs> dude. One of my other pop obsessions is uh-huh. uh, well, I guess pop. I don't know. I love Post Malone. And I'm always like, yeah. Post Malone's Texan. He's a Texan metalhead. Like he's a sword he's... fan too. Yeah, he did this like video playing guitar in like some guitar shop and just busted out a sword riff. I was like, damn, look at that. Yeah, that Kyle, funny. I swear to God, if you ever go and get to meet Posty, you gotta take me with you. Okay. Just I have a cupcake at the shop called Toast Malone, <laughs> and oh my God, full circle. Is he vegan? He, no, no, oh, okay. but he performed at Rolling Loud in Miami like last week and Post Malone performed wearing a bikini kill shirt. I am not joking. See, we're like two degrees away from making this happen too. We, we're going to have a party with Woody Harrelson, Posty. <laughs> Dude. We're going to bring it all together. <laughs> For my birthday, my friend got me the Post Malone Crocs. That's what. That's how I'm living. That's, that's my life in COVID. You know I you wear... made it when you have your signature Crocs. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dude, they're like tactile Crocs. They're so cozy. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not even kidding. Good Lord. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. I always, uh, I always ask my uh, musical guests if there's uh, any song they want to play. Do you have any like So In Love tracks you want to play or a uh, favorite Phobia song yeah. or just whatever you want? It's a... Uh, you put a damn bikini kill song. We can play a whole song. I don't care. <laughs> uh, there's some zuc- uh, zucchini. There's some uh, so in love stuff on Spotify right now. We just released an EP that we were supposed to come out like three years ago. 
Uh, the song called Parasites is probably my favorite on there. You should listen to that. I bet you might like the guitars on that song, Kyle. We're going to play it. We're going to have a good time, okay. too. Cece, Hell yeah. you're the greatest. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Kyle. I'll see you around. You know it. Tuning into the highway this week, a big shout out to Reverend Guitars, Railhammer Pickups, and Earthquaker Devices. If you liked what you heard, you can follow where you can follow, subscribe where you can subscribe, and if you want to go one step further, you can support us on Patreon at The Highway with Kyle Shutt. For a few bucks a month, you can help us keep this party going, get early access to next week's episode, and even get yourself a shout out. 